Hello and thanks for joining us for today's video. We just want to remind you to check out our podcast, Into the Killing, and our new YouTube channel, Paranormally Listed, because who knows, you may be wanting to hear more of my monotone voice. In our latest episode of Into the Killing, we discussed two murders where the police had a suspect for over a decade, but they had to wait for advancements in technology to finally close the cases. Our latest video from Paranormally Listed is about three celebrities who had encounters with UFOs. What celebrities are those? You'll have to check out the video to find out. You can find a link to both Into the Killing and Paranormally Listed in the description box below this video. Just before we get into today's video, we want to talk about our fantastic sponsor, Magellan TV. I really don't get much of a lunch break because I work from home. I usually just eat in my office in front of my laptop. To take a small mental break, I like to check out Magellan TV's new releases section. The other day I watched a riveting documentary while I ate my grilled cheese sandwiches. It's called How to Catch a Serial Killer. It's about the convoluted case of multiple murderer Christopher Halliwell. The case spans 10 years and nearly destroyed one of the detectives who tried to catch him. I highly recommend checking out this documentary. It's one of those stories where you won't believe what happens next. Magellan TV has so many other great true crime documentaries plus documentaries and other genres like history, science, and biography. If you have never checked out Magellan TV before, it's easy to use. You can use it on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Google Play, or you can just cast from your browser to your TV. And you should check out Magellan TV because they're offering criminally listed viewers a month of free service. To get this amazing offer, go to try.magellantv.com slash criminally listed. So check out Magellan TV today because you'll find something great to watch, and you'll be supporting Criminally Listed. Number 3, Andrew DeVere On January 9, 1986, the police in Honolulu, Hawaii, were called to the apartment of 37-year-old Raymond Boyer. His body had been found rolled up in a rug. It was clear he had been dead at least a week. The medical examiner determined that the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. The police found a bloody claw tooth hammer in the apartment. It was determined to be the murder weapon. The police learned that Boyer had an on-again, off-again relationship with a male sex worker who was 17 years younger than him, 20-year-old Andrew DeVere. In 1984, DeVere lived with Boyer. He lived with him again in the lead up to Christmas 1985. Both DeVere and Boyer were involved in Honolulu's drug scene. DeVere was brought in for questioning and he initially denied committing the murder. But then he broke down and confessed. He had several reasons for why he killed Boyer. For example, he would make him beg for drugs. Devier also claimed that Boyer supposedly was killing one of his friends by supplying him with drugs. Devier also said that Boyer would humiliate him in front of people. He had developed a really degrading way of humiliating him. He would fart in his face. In late December 1985, Devier decided he had suffered enough and he was going to kill Boyer. He tried to find a gun, but he couldn't, so he decided to use the hammer. On New Year's Day, at about noon, Boyer was sleeping. DeVere told the police that he picked up the hammer. He said, I wasn't mad at him at the time that I did it, but I knew I had to do it because, later on, I knew that I would, you know, I would forget how he treated me. He then struck him five times on the head with the hammer. Andrew DeVere went to trial in December 1986. The jury deliberated for 90 minutes before finding him guilty. He was sentenced to life with the chance of parole. Andrew DeVere was released in 2007 after serving 21 years in prison. After he was released, he moved to the mainland and married a woman. In 2014, the British tabloid, The Daily Mail, published a story about the murder. They claimed that Raymond Boyer sold President Barack Obama and his friends marijuana when they attended a private high school in Honolulu. In Obama's yearbook, he thanked the Chum Gang and Ray. 
Chium is apparently Hawaiian slang for smoking marijuana. Boyer was murdered about seven years after Obama graduated. Since entering public life, Obama has been open about his marijuana use. However, Obama has neither confirmed nor denied if Raymond Boyer sold a marijuana. Also, no credible news sources have confirmed if Boyer was Obama's weed dealer in high school. Number 2. The Death of Shakira Dorsey In the fall of 2012, Shakira Dorsey was 16 years old and she lived in Warrensville Heights, Ohio. She was in the 11th grade and she was a member of her school's softball team. On the night of October 3rd, 2012, Shakira was confronted by another 16-year-old girl in her apartment complex. The other girl had passed gas and Shakira had teased her about it. The two girls started throwing punches. Shakira quit fighting, but the other girl wasn't finished. Shakira fell to the ground. The other girl climbed on top of Shakira and kept striking her in the face. Several adults, including Shakira's stepfather, watched the two girls fight for several minutes. Then Shakira's stepfather stepped in and broke up the fight. Shakira was breathing heavily and started pacing. Suddenly, she collapsed. 911 was called and Shakira was rushed to the hospital. Tragically, 16-year-old Shakira Dorsey was pronounced dead at the hospital. The 16-year-old girl whom she fought with, who was never identified, was charged with murder. An autopsy revealed that Shakira had died of a heart attack. The last news article about the case was published in January 2013. The prosecution contended that the fight caused Shakira's heart attack. The defense argued that a pre-existing heart condition caused Shakira's heart attack. What happened to the girl who was charged with murder is unknown. But many people thought this was a tragic and senseless death that was caused because the girl had been teased for farting. Number 1. Mark Higgins On January 15, 2011, 21-year-old Matt Walton and his roommate were hosting a party at their home in Bristol, Connecticut. Walton worked as a pizza delivery man, but his true passion was music. He played in a heavy metal band, and he spent much of his free time writing music. One of the guests at the party that night was 21-year-old Mark Higgins. Higgins was not close friends with the hosts of the party. He was just a casual acquaintance. Higgins drank a lot through the night, and he got very drunk. He also kept farting. People were upset because he kept passing gas, so several partygoers gave him a hard time. One person who kept insulting him was a young woman named Stacy Buckcherry. Shortly after 10 p.m., Higgins got sick of being hassled about his flatulence and he called Buckcherry a tramp. She responded by slapping him. Higgins smashed a beer ball and stormed out of the party. About 45 minutes later, 21-year-old Mark Higgins returned to the party and he had a knife in each hand. He started indiscriminately stabbing people who were on the porch. He stabbed 19-year-old David Klatt, 18-year-old Sandra Ranger, 18-year-old Tyler Basso, and the host, 21-year-old Matt Walton. After stabbing the four people, Higgins ran off into the night. The injured partygoers were taken to the hospital. David Clatt was stabbed in the chest and Tyler Basso was stabbed in the arm. They both survived their injuries. 18-year-old Sandra Ranger was stabbed multiple times in the side of her torso. She was in critical condition, but she ultimately survived. 21-year-old Matt Walton was stabbed multiple times in the chest. He did not survive the assault. After leaving the party, Mark Higgins walked into the police station 
and confessed to the attack. He was asked why he did it, and he said he wanted to teach people not to with him. In February 2013, Higgins pleaded guilty to murder and first-degree assault. In April 2013, he was sentenced to 35 years in prison. At his sentencing hearing, the judge said, In all my years, I'm hard-pressed to recall a more senseless, just completely senseless, tragic murder. 32-year-old Mark Higgins is currently serving his sentence at the McDougall Walker Correctional Institution in Suffield, Connecticut. He is expected to be released in January 2046 when he's 56 years old. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please don't forget to check out our new channel, Paranormally Listed. Our latest video is about three celebrity UFO encounters. You can find a link to the channel on the screen now and in the description box below this video. Well that's all for today, thanks again for watching.